Hi, so I'm always on a search to make things simpler, easier, cheaper, so that anybody can make them. And this is the magnetic switching circuit that I've come up with. And in a minute, I'll go through how it's made. But I want you to see how it works. Initially, it's got a tiny bit of residual magnetism. I mean, it's next to nothing, actually. It's really easy to pick that off because of the magnets that we're using in there. But if I turn the power on, it loses all magnetism altogether, which is really cute. Now, I've got this wired up to this H-bridge here. Now, the H-bridge is a relay, and in video 965, we went through how to turn a, a relay into a H-bridge, so really easy to make that. If I turn that relay on, we reverse the current in there, and the magnet, this sticks again, and it's actually really quite strong. It's much stronger than that. <laughs> it's much stronger than that initial one that we had. So if I turn the relay off, then it comes away. Still got the magnetism, but it comes away really easily. I have to turn the thing on for it to be able to do that. So this will reverse its magnet magnetism from zero to fully on. And when it's in its rest position, there's a tiny bit of residual magnetism. Now, I was asked whether it makes a difference the way I made these. And if you have a look at video 1036, we did some testing about the effect of having magnetic assistance against an electromagnet, because it's not just an electromagnet. It's a magnetically assisted electromagnet. When it's on, it's stronger than the coil by itself. So when I made this with just the coil, it was okay. It used quite a lot of amps, reasonable amount of strength. When I magnetically assist it, it's an awful lot stronger for less current. So the magnetic assisting really works. So that is the basic magnetic switch. Now, it did look like that. It's quite a lot of sawing and quite a lot of shaping. When it looks like that, it's really easy because it's two metal bars <coughs> on this. And let's have a close up of this. So this is really surprisingly uncomplicated. What it is, is a stack of 10 mil washers. So if I get my stack of washers there and I super glued those into a stack to make me this tube, that obviously is 10 mil in diameter. So what I used was 10 mil in diameter neodymium magnets. There's five of them and they're 2.5 centimeters. And those neodymium magnets go nicely in the center of that stack of washers. So those stack of washers were all glued together. And then I got some repair washers and popped them on the top and the bottom, like that. So we get ourselves a metal bobbin, like that. These are just bits of plastic I put on there so that the wire didn't rub on the metal. So I stuck a bit of plastic on there, put some tape around the centre, and wired a whole load of copper around it. So this is the copper that I used. It's 0.35mm uh, thickness. And I wired and um, just span it on there until it was that full, which is reasonably full. And then I dropped my neodymium magnets, these, right in the centre of my stack there. So that's how easy it is to make that. You're not doing much more, in fact, you're not doing anything more than gluing some washers together. Now, I chose those sizes because those are the sizes I had. Clearly, if you have smaller magnets, use smaller washers. If you have 6mm magnets, well, 6mm washers and so on. And that makes the activation coil. Now, the way this operates is like this. We have our magnet, north, south. And then we've surrounded it with a piece of steel. So the magnetic flux can go like this in that flux circuit. If we put a lump of steel on the top there, then the magnetic flux is we're held within the piece of steel. And that's exactly what happens when I put those two bars on. So we're completing a magnetic circuit by doing that. Now, the magnetic circuit isn't fully saturated, so there is a little leakage at this end here of that magnet magnetism, and so we get a very slight attraction in the end there. It is slight, it's, it's just capable of holding that block. So very slight. So there is our magnetic switch again. There's the lumps of steel that we've got, which is these bits. This is the magnet in north to south, the permanent magnet, and then we've got our steel jacket made out of the washers there. Now, with a coil around here, so when I pass a current down there, if I make this south and this south, this north and this north, there is no longer any leakage. All it can do is that, and it fully does that, so we lose all the magnetic attraction at the end here.
Now if I reverse the direction of that current flow and make that north and that north and that south and that south, now we have two big magnets and all of the flux goes to the end here, as it must do, and we get a very strong attraction here. So that's all that's happening. We're reversing the polarity of the current, one to pull the fields into and one to make sure that they push out. Now that reversal is taking place in this H bridge here. And like I say, we've done H bridges in 965. Again, to answer the question, does the magnet make a difference? Oh yeah, look at 1036, it makes a huge difference, okay? Now this is made to be easily made. I've used the laminations from a transformer for sure, but any bar of metal will do it. Now, we're doing this because we want to make an axial flux magnetic assisted motor. And a good question I've been asked is, how do you ensure the direction of rotation? <laughs> Turns out, actually, it's stupidly easy. What you do is you take your magnets there, and you twist that just like that. Now, that still works beautifully, but it begins its journey here, and like a V-gate, will travel to here, and it always goes in that direction. Let me show you. Okay, so we've got the arm here over the midpoint between the two steel bits. And if you want to know about this rotor, check out video 1038 or 39, where we make this rotor. But it's in the midpoint with the slight twist pointing towards that one. And if we give it a flip of power, there we go. And <laughs> it pulls the rotor around. And it can only pull the rotor around in that direction. So there we go. Isn't that ridiculously simple? A really easy way to make these magnetic switches, curing the direction of rotation by a slight twist, and this should be really easy for anybody to make at home. And I would encourage you to do so and, and to experiment with them. I think they're quite fascinating, actually. There is quite a lot of research on these axial flux reluctant motors, so there's uh, a good reason to be working on this. Anyway, I hope you're enjoying the project series so far, and thank you very much for watching.